Hello, and today I'm back finally after 37 and a half years with a Scratch video. I was never planning on making another Scratch video unless I found out about something, but a lot of people who are subscribed to me are because of that. And what I'm going to be showing in this video is in my game Fog a Platformer, there's this 3D-like effect. It looks 3D, but it's technically not because, I mean, you can't go back into the background and I just kind of had that because it looked cool and I figured out how to do it. And this is actually from quite a while ago. It's from I made this in February. So this was from a while ago. But I decided to uh, to make a tutorial on it because um I was gonna originally make a tutorial about how to add enemies into my other game, but I haven't actually figured out how to do that yet. And because I made like a pathfinding, kind of like very basic pathfinding thing, but then that didn't work for some reason in it. So I might make that at some point. I'm going to be showing how to make the kind of going into the background effect that I have on the platforms here. So to start out, I'm just going to, going to, make, going to make a new project over here. And so I'm going to start out with, um, I'm going to need two stripes, but don't create one yet because we'll do that later. So to start out, what you want to do is make a new sprite, and this is going to be the, I'm just going to call this effect because this sprite is going to have the 3D effect on it. And you're going to need two costumes for this. The first costume I'm just going to call size, and the second one will actually be the visual thing. This costume will be the what you see. So I'm just going to call this level, and if you want, you could also obviously have multiple of um, these costumes that switches through if you want to have, like, have a platform with multiple levels, for example. So in the one called size, or you don't have to call it size, but in this one, just put like a circle or a square, just something small in the center of it. It doesn't matter what, but just put that there. And I'll explain why we need this later. It doesn't matter what it looks like, you aren't going to see this in the game, but this is very important. You could even just put a dot. And in level, this is going to be the level. Now, by the way, remember that this is going to be very zoomed out. So, while this looks very small here, this would actually be a pretty big platform. So you just need to keep that in mind. And I'm just going to make um, a pretty small just example level. Okay, I don't know what this is that I just made, but this is what it is. And this is also how I created my level in my fog platformer. And by the way, this is also what it looks like inside of my fog platformer level. If you look at this, I actually just have all of it in one sprite, which is the same method I used if you saw my scrolling platformer video. So you can actually see the entire level just right here in this. It's pretty cool. So anyways, if we come back here, the first thing I'm gonna you're gonna need to do is well I mean the effect, obviously. So what you'll wanna do, and this is where the your costume comes in. There's a there's a reason that we have this. So when you start the game, what you'll want to do is you actually need to switch the costume to this costume and then set the size to whatever size you want the smallest of the background to be. So in this one, as you can see, when we play it, the smallest would be like where, like right where my mouse is here, it would go until there, and the largest goes until right where my mouse is here. So you can just mess around with various different sizes, but I'm just going to be using 900 as my example. So as you can see, now the circle's really big. Also, um, if you want to have larger sizes, it um, having a smaller circle is better. So the reason why you need this circle is because if we switch our costume to just the level and then set our size really big, as you can see, Scratch actually stops it from getting larger once it reaches a certain point. So this, with this costume I have here, can only actually get to size 568. 
but if we use this, it can get to size 900. And the reason why this is useful is because you can then switch the costume back to level and get it at size 900 when you wouldn't normally be able to do that. But we don't actually want to switch it to um, level yet because we'll do that later. So now you need to, this is going to be where the clones are created. So in this one, you also, you don't need to do this, but it can make it look better, which is that you can use the brightness effect and set it to, if you set it to 100, the circle will just appear invisible pretty much. But then you can say, change color effect by negative something. I think I'm just going to have the brightness effect at 50 for this. Oh, that's a color effect, oops. So as you can see, that kind of happens right here. And what that does is nothing yet. Oh, so also you'll want to move it to the center. You don't actually need to do this, I don't think, but it's just useful to have. So the next thing you want to do is, since this is cloning, you need to create the clone, right? And but So right now it just creates a ton of clones that do nothing, so you need to change the size. So you'll probably so since these are going into the foreground in the way I have it, just make the, what I'm going to do is make it so the size gets bigger. As you can see here, the size gets bigger. And what you'll now need to do, or yeah, is so first of all you need want this to be hidden so that you don't see this circle thing. And then when you start as a clone, you want the clone to appear and then switch to the level costume. If you're wondering why it does it here instead of over here, it's because if you have the size at 900 and try to change the size to higher, it'll realize that since it can only go up to like 450 or 500, I think, it will realize that it's too high and actually go down. So you need to leave it at the small costume for this and then switch to your larger level costume once it's been created. So as you can see, you can already see a kind of 3D level similar to this, as you can see that, and then, so, but right now it does create it, but it, oh, oop, but it doesn't do anything. It just kind of sits there. So in this example, I'm actually just going to, instead of actually making a game, I'm just gonna make it so you can just scroll the camera around, although I will show how to make a hitbox thing as well, because you need that. So, for the hitbox, what you'll want to do, this was, I'm going to call this hitbox, which, because, which is because if you just use these as a hitbox, it will actually use the farthest back one, which most of the time you probably won't want it to be your hitbox. Look at my fog platform where the hitbox is kind of in the middle area of it. So it looks like you're standing in the middle of this. Also, as you can see, if you use larger sizes, um, it actually kind of gets a little blurry, you can see. But it's only on like edges a little bit, and uh, if I mean, it's not really a big problem. So now we have the hitbox, and what I'm going to do for this is... So what I want the hitbox to be is halfway through this. Now you might want it farther on one side or the other, or maybe completely in the front or back, or maybe you don't want a hitbox, you just want to go through walls, I don't know. So in this, so for this one what we're actually going to want to do is, for my example, 12,000, no, 1,275 is the very center. So we're going to do that, set size to this. I'm also just going to clear the graphical effects by clicking on this. Um, oh, and I'm also going to show it. So as you can see, it's there. And obviously we need to, for this one, we are going to just put it right there. Oh, also, you'll always need to keep these two in sync. So as you can see, it passes through this right in the middle. And it actually covers it up pretty well. Uh, that might not happen, and I'm going to show how to fix that later. But for now, this is fine. So... Next, I'm going to show how to make it move, which is just going to be pretty much the same thing as my code from my scrolling platformer again, um, but it's just going to be up, down, left, right movement, so 
Um, I'll just use WASD for this set of arrow keys. I don't know why, don't ask. So with key W pressed, you might think you want to move it up, but actually you want it to move down, which the reasoning being that if the player moves up, the scene would move down. Makes sense. So I'm just going to do this for all of them. S moves up. You can see you can now go around here. And obviously you could, um, it, if you want to know how to add a player to this, it's pretty simple, but I'm not going to explain that since I pretty much explained it in my scrolling platformer video since that's more of just a scrolling anything video. Now that I think about it, I just use the platformer for the example, but yeah. So next what we're going to want is we need to make it so that this visual effect actually moves around with them like it does in the fog platformer. So this is actually pretty simple. You only actually really need two pieces of code. I'm going to stop this because it's kind of laggy. <laughs> So you need a set X and a set Y, and then you'll need this, the backdrop of the stage, and you can change this to hitbox and then X position, and then Y position. And at first, this might look like it works, like you can scroll around, but then when you get farther and farther away, the effect becomes really extreme and weird, which is because the way that this works right now is instead of moving the camera, it's like you have a um, one massive image and you're changing the crop on the image. So it's all so when you get really far away, these just like have like very a lot. I mean, maybe you want this, but it just looks really weird when you get too far away from the center. Well, um <laughs> I was messing around with this, and this isn't part of the tutorial, but I accidentally made it so like the camera turns. I might do something with this in the future, but it just looks kind of cool how the camera looks like it's turning. So for this part, as you can see, so I didn't, so what you want to do here is you need the set X to position of hitbox, but then you want to multiply it by the size divided by the hitbox's size. So in this example, the hitbox size is always 1275, but if you wanted to make it so you could change the hitbox size for some reason, you could just do this with the size of hitbox that works too, or if you just don't want to have to put in the number. Oh, also, <laughs> the Y is weird right now. Let me just and then fix that. So what you'll also want is for the Y, have the same thing, but detects the Y of hitbox instead of the X of hitbox. And as you can see now, we can move this around completely and it looks like we're moving the camera in it, uh, unless you go too far away in which it kind of gets weird, but yeah. So as you can see, this is the effect complete and then you can just use the hitbox. So if you have a thing you want, you can just um, use, I believe, my platformer tutorial, not my platform, my 3D platformer explains how to get the hitbox to work by, basically how it works is, in, is you have the hitbox be the player controls, but inverted, and then have the player be the hitbox, but just a square in the center. But yeah, this is, this is the effect complete, and that's all I was showing here. I don't want to like explain and um, show a game so that if you want to do this for something other than a platformer it might seem easy, I don't know. Also, yeah, so this is the the effect complete. It's so cool. Wow, amazing. Fake 3D. Also, as you can see, you can't see the hitbox, but if you are for some reason having problems with seeing the hitbox, um, what you can do is keep it shown. Don't hide it, but you can um, set, you can actually set the ghost effect to 100, which makes it completely invisible. And the reason why you have to do this instead of hiding it is because if a sprite is set to hidden, it doesn't actually have collisions, meaning that when you doing hitboxes, you normally have to set them to ghost effect instead of hidden. But yep, it's like, 
This looks really cool, but in reality, it's literally just these three scripts doing all of it. It's kind of crazy how simple this is to make. Um, yeah, bye.